British University, Vietnam. Hi, welcome to another episode of IFO Nightly Show. So, uh, we've spent quite some time together this season and I'm sure you're quite used to the setting of the season because relatively nothing has changed much. But have you ever considered how you can draw inspiration from mundane things? Because I find that if you look at something with enough care and enough love, it becomes new. For example, like this notebook. It's an IFO notebook, but in another universe, I think it could be a portal to knowledge in a way. This is the essence of improvisation. And today, we're going to meet a guest that is going to introduce us to the world of improv. And I'm so excited to meet her. I'm gonna take you there now. Let's go. I'm a spy. I'm a cat. Meow. I'm a tree. And those were the few things that you can become when doing improvisation. My name is Von Possible, and I am the coach and founder of Saigon Improv House. Welcome to the journey where I'm gonna share with you more story about improvisation, the art form that I love so much and hope to share with many Vietnamese people. Welcome back to another episode of IFO Nightly Show Season 8. And as you guys already know, this season is dedicated to finding new things and discovering new passions for high school students and our new freshmen in university. So here with me today is Chị Vân Possible and her spirit of conquering the unknown. Yay. So today we are going to discover a very new but a very exciting uh, new Art form. Art form, here, yes. right here in Vietnam, and it's improv. So improv is short for improvisation. So um, improv, to my understanding, is a form of acting where you do not know what you're coming into, and you're just like letting yourself into the scene. And it's very new to Vietnam, because I don't think I've ever heard of its presence here in our country before knowing about you, mm. actually. So I'm very curious as to why you decided to bring this art form back, back home. Okay, do we have a whole day? I'm gonna have we a We have a whole day, whatever you like. I am okay. here. Um, so in uh, 2017, I have a chance to um, uh, go to New York to mm -hmm. study uh, media studies for ah. my master degree under a Fulbright scholarship program. Um, and after two years of uh, finishing uh, the, the, the degree, um, I have a year to work in New York. And so during that year, I, um, by chance, I have a very good friend who is a Venezuelan, mm -hmm. um, and she's an MC in NBC. Um, and so she told me that, Vaughn, why don't you try improv? Um, they have a UCB theater, and you can try it out, and I think you're going to love it. Um, and so after I graduate from my um, master's degree, I have a, a short, slow time mm -hmm. because I spend a lot of time in the library and um, studying for the degree. So after you have conquered one of your biggest dreams, which is studying abroad, um, I have a short time where I feel like, what's next? Mm. And so I heard about improv, and I remember I went to the theater. Um, I went to the theater, and um, my impression when I watched the first improv show is that how on earth are these people so creative, mm. funny, and understanding each other so well? Uh -huh. because they don't plan anything. They just ask for a suggestion from the audience and then they play a whole set on stage for 30 minutes straight. The beauty of improv is you are yourself with other people being themselves. Mm. Um, so it's a collection of people who can be themselves together. In improv, there are a few rules that um, I can share with you, three simple rules. Mm -hmm. The first rule is that you're gonna have to say yes and to what your partner say. Mm -hmm. um, and after I do this, I realize that we say no but a lot in life mm -hmm. because it's the nature of the, uh, of the human to um, challenge, to question, to make sure that you, you don't fall into a trap. The second rule is make your partner look good. 
Oh, that's very interesting. So most of the time, we um, we are trapped in the thinking of how to make myself look good. But in improv, you are trained to make the other person in front of you look good. Mm. And if in a group, everybody takes care of one person next to them, mm -hmm. then eventually everyone is taken care of, but nobody is taken care of themselves only. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. When I learned about that concept, I was like, boom. And then like, it's, 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 um, it's um, resetting a lot of um, thinking and believing and, and um, uh, uh, mindset. And the last thing is, say the first thing on your mind, which is your original thought and your, and your most instinctive thought. Mm -hmm. So just three simple rules, but you can see that it, it creates an environment for you to be yourself, mm -hmm. but um, in harmony with other people. The more I hear you talk about it, the more I find a connection with Lao Tzu's The Way, like Dao Yao is the Vietnamese term for it. And The Way is about leaning and accepting your nature. And it's about living in harmony mm. in contrast to you know living with restriction. I feel like this is the most human humans can be. And it's very interesting to see an art form adopt that philosophy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Underneath improvisation theater is um, beautiful philosophy where mm. it makes you become a better version of yourself, mm. whatever you do, whatever job you are or you do. And um, so I practice this uh, very, very intensively. I work in the theater. I volunteer to um, help with the shows and the tickets and selling waters and, and drinks for people who come to the theater. Mm -hmm. And then after, after that, I went back to Vietnam and I, I missed the doing improv so much mm. and then um, I decided to start sharing it with Vietnamese people. It's been my full-time job since the first day I came back to Vietnam so mm. it's been a year mm -hmm. and um, I don't see the end <laughs> of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working every day with great, um, uh, great gratitude and, and happiness mm. and because this job is so joyful it's, it's hard um, in terms of I have to translate many concepts into uh, from American culture to Vietnamese culture. Mm -hmm. um, many sleepless nights of how to share with a student something that they haven't lived, that they, they haven't seen, they haven't felt. I had a chance to go to mm, uh, New York, and so I lived in that culture for a few years, and so I absorb, absorb it. Mm -hmm. So how to help my student who never set their foot outside of Vietnam. Um, so those are the challenges, but also the joy when you see people who are all um, office worker, mm -hmm. um, who work in finance, who are teachers, who are nurses, who um, when the first day they came to class, they are timid, they are scared, mm -hmm. and then when they graduate, they are free, they can speak, and they can collaborate with other people. That is the joy and the, the, the gratitude that I always have um, every day um, mm -hmm. of doing this job. So you describe your uh, act of teaching as translating culture to culture. And if we consider like translation theory, there's like word for word translation, but there's also uh, meaning to meaning translation. And I think this is very important because in order to bring one culture to another, I do not believe in explaining it explicitly and just forcing uh, the, the culture that is accepting that ideology to accept it as it is. There needs to be a process of interpretation uh, in the in between too, and I believe that's very true for uh, bringing improv to Vietnam. So, what was it like forming a Vietnamese understanding of improv like for you as a teacher? Uh, even if you are American or you are Vietnamese or you are Cambodian, we're all human, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, we all want acceptance. We all want love, collaboration, self-expression. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that what medium and what platform you use to achieve that. Uh -huh. So improv is, a, is one of the medium to mm -hmm. do that. Um, when I play improv in uh, New York, I remember there, there are exercises where the teacher just say the exercise and then the student do it freely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when I tell my student um, a question and mm -hmm. I ask them to answer, or I give them a, a prompt to do, it's hard for them mm -hmm. because they are not used to uh, express themselves in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so in a sense, I feel like my Fulbright um, journey 
create a circle again uh -huh. because Fulbright Scholarship actually choose people um, from Vietnam go into America and from America go into Vietnam mm -hmm. to strengthen the peace and the collaboration, the understanding between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find a better way for me with my, um, with my preference, with my ability to bring an art form uh -huh. in America to Vietnam, make it more Vietnamese, and then also helping Vietnamese people to become more open, mm. more global mind setting, mm -hmm. um, to accept new things and to, to, to enjoy more uh, international um, mindset. Um, so back to your question, yes, interpreting um, an art form is not easy. But so far, so good. We're, we're doing good. And I'm very proud of, of my students um, who come from so many different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And they embrace it. And they all use it to uh, make their work and their relationship with family better. My mind is running a mile a minute. And I would, <laughs> like, like you said, we can have a day's discussion of all of this. But uh, regretfully, that is the end of our first discussion. But uh, not to fear, the next talk, we're going to dive into your philosophy, your own philosophy of who you are as a person. And you place yourself within your work. Okay. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. But up next is On The Go. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Next on IFO Nightly Show. IFO on the go. I'm Phuong An, and it's my pleasure to be back here. Hello everyone, this is IFO on the go. I'm Phuong An, and it's my pleasure to be back here. So I have a question for you. Do you all remember your childhood dreams? Because one of my childhood dreams is to become a lawyer. And I think that is greatly inspired by the powerful, strong, and intelligent image of lawyers on screen. And speaking of that, I'm actually at one of the most beautiful locations within Ho Chi Minh City, and it's also the birthplace of many cool people that I just mentioned who are going to become future lawyers. And that is Ho Chi Minh City University of Law. So are you all excited to discover this university with me? Because I am very. So now, let's go. Hello, Nam. Hi. Can you introduce yourself to our audience so that we can yeah. get to know you? Of course. Uh, my name is Hoang Nam. I'm, uh, senior student at Ho Chi Minh City University of Law, majoring in commercial, civil, and international law. So how does, how does it feel like to study here uh, in your four years of law? I think that is quite an exciting experience for me because learning about law has always been my passion since I was very young because my dad is working as a prosecutor. So law has always been an intriguing subject for me. That's true. I believe that law has always been a, a dream for many people and especially of many high school students here. So can you give us an advice for our students who want to apply to this school? Yeah, so I think that law is a very promising field given that now today we are in an era of globalization and many uh, foreigners coming to Vietnam to make investment and that we have many job opportunities. And not only that, when graduating from law school, you can choose to be a prosecutor, to be a judge, to be a lawyer. So th that being said, there are wide ranges of job opportunities for you. And I think this is very promising and also interesting for you at the same time. That's true. And so it's also a great thing that we have Nam here to be our tour guide because we are looking forward to discover the campus. Yes. So can you show us the way? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, what is, what is this place? The Center for Legal Consultancy and the Clinical Legal Office. 
Yeah, so this is a very wonderful place, I, I need to say, because this is where the students come and work under the supervision of one lecturer at mm -hmm. our school. They would provide free legal assistance to those who have difficulties accessing to justice, maybe because they, they don't have not that much of money or so. Yeah, so this serves two purposes at the same time. The student would have the chance to practice what they learn at school, and at the same time, it would uh, also a place to support people with, with some difficulty, oh. as I've mentioned. This is such a meaningful activity, right? Yes. Do you also have lots of um, opportunities to have hands-on experience during classes? Yeah, uh, we have a lot during each of our class. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the lecturers often give us some, some case, some real life cases as well, but that's just for practicing. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we want to have a hands-on, a real life experience, we generally go to the law firm to, to have an, an internship oh. there. Oh, that's is nice. Oh. Yes. And how about the extracurricular activities? Like, do, does the school offer uh, what kinds of extracurricular activities? Yes, so this, there is this one activity that is very typical mm -hmm. for any law student and you can find it not only in the law institution in Vietnam but also around the world as well. That is a multi activity. Mm -hmm. This is where students would have to, uh, to solve a hypothetical case and to also represent their client in, in, uh, in front of a, a, a court and like an arbitration as well. That sounds so fascinating. Yes. Oh, I guess you, you must have lots of interesting experience there. I definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also know that the, um, the University of Law has a very, very beautiful hall. Is that true? Yeah, that is on in the floor 10. Oh, can you show me the way there? Yeah, okay, okay. of course. Now we're going to visit that, right? Yeah. Okay, so excited. Okay. Stay tuned. Ta đều sinh ra với những số phận khác nhau Những cái ngày muốn vươn mình trước trời gió đầy khát khao Và chẳng cần cậu phải nói một lời nào Mình vẫn cảm nhận được một trái tim đầy hoài bão Hào hức và nôn nao Welcome back from On The Go, and uh, let's continue our deep dive into Vung Possible. <laughs> so we got to know your work a lot through the first talk, and we would love to know more. But this section of our discussion today, I want to focus on you personally and how you came to be the person you are today. That, that sounds a bit you know, abstract and a bit too, too vague, but I think it's it's big. It's it's good to consider everything as a collective, as a whole, right? So let's start with why you fell in love with improv. Why did you you know find such a big place in your heart for improv, the way that you have right now? Mm. Um, I think since very young age, um, I think. You may share this with me. Mm -hmm. um, we love to achieve. We are high achievers. Mm -hmm. We love to um, do things that prove to ourselves that we are worth it. We are good. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember when I started uh, taking improv, it's, um, co coincidentally, it's also the time where I have the low time of, 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 of my life, one of the lowest points of my life. Um, and I had a lot of struggles with my own thinking, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was ve a very hard time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I took improv. Um, so if there's one takeaway I, I, I get from that time, it was many times we have problems because we are in our own head. Mm -hmm. And we are trolling around with questions, problems, and we don't have the answer mm -hmm. because we are inside here. Mm -hmm. um, when I took improv, it helped me to get out of my own head. Mm -hmm. So if you remember the, the rules of improv that I tell you, mm -hmm. um, we agree with the other person, which requires you to listen to them carefully, mm. truly open and listen. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to make them look good. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about the other person. Yeah. You don't it's focus. It's about giving. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's about giving attention. It's about paying attention to the surrounding and to the other person. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing is say the first thing on your mind, which is encouraging you to be yourself, to be authentic, to be sincere. So I think it's a, it's a beautiful place um, 
And also, you got to act and move your body. Mm -hmm. And um, I also do some, you know, dancing and um, move movement therapy. Uh -huh. And so yeah. I realized that our body stores emotions. Mm -hmm. Our body stores story mm -hmm. uh, and tension. So when you can dance, when you can move, when you can jump, when you can shout, when you can act, mm -hmm. when you can touch other people, those are ways of interacting and communications that help you to get out of your own head. And maybe that is exactly what you need to see your problems from another perspective, and you have the answer naturally. Mm -hmm. I, there is a notion that I've read online, and it has stayed with me ever since. And it's such a beautiful thought. And it goes, we are a mosaic of everything we love and everything we've been through. Mm -hmm. We are a compilation of experiences and relationships and heartbreak and time. And I think truly act, being able to access all of that resource makes us live to our full potential. Right. And I think improv releases that potential. But does it ever become scary? Because like you're so limitless, you're scary. D does it ever occur to you that way? The most exciting thing about improv is that it's so scary. Oh. And at the same time, you have friends next to you. Mm. So improv is a teamwork, is a team uh, art form. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do stand up, you are there by yourself. Mm. When you are a singer, it, unless when you are in a choir or you're in an ensemble, you mm. are there singing by yourself. Mm. But improv is a collaborative art form. Mm -hmm. So you always have your team next to you. And so the scary thing is that you don't know what's going to happen, but you know that your friend's going to be having your back. Ah. And so it's less scary. Mm -hmm. And so I always have this metaphor to, uh, to share with my students. Uh, when you come into a scene, you bring one brick and you put it down. Mm -hmm. Just one brick. Mm -hmm. The goal is to build um, a house, but you don't have to bring in a house because it's a collaborative process. Oh. So just bring one brick and mm -hmm. put it down, and then your friend's going to come see your brick, and yes, and by putting their brick on your brick. Mm -hmm. And then the next one will come in with their third brick. And brick by brick, you're going to have a house that is mm -hmm. built by all of you. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the scariness is, is, is not too much, mm -hmm. because you know that you have your team, you are together. And that is the beauty of it. But I have to say that the nerve, the nervousness, um, uh, the feeling of being so scared before you step on stage is mm. with adrenaline. Mm. Is it pumps amazing. through your veins. Yeah. 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 Once you've done a set, your face is red, but then you feel like there's a rush of um, um, joy and, and happiness that you share with your team. It's amazing. It, this trustful exercise, this continuous trustful exercise, just like closing your eyes and believing that somebody will catch you, I think it, it trains not only bravery, but also joy yeah. in, in falling into the unknown. And it's so rare yeah. to see that. And it's actually the very basic skill for living this life. Because mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. That's very true. We don't know what other people are going to tell us today. We don't know who you're going to meet. and what's going to happen to you. What we can do is how we yes and to mm -hmm. that situation. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people think studying improv is scary or studying improv is only for performer. It's not true. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends who is nurse, who is teacher, who is engineer, who is my oldest classmate is 81 years old. And he's a jewelry maker and seller. Mm -hmm. And uh, people study improv to do better in their daily life. You don't mm -hmm. need to be a performer. If you want to pursue that uh, road, you can do. Mm -hmm. But um, studying improv to be a better version of yourself is, is amazing enough. That's it, everyone. We're going to improv class. Let's like, go. Everybody. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going right now, after this episode. <laughs> um, I think we have uh, done more than enough to inspire you to find out more on about improv on your own. And since this is an educational you know, show, you've achieved the purpose that, <laughs> that can be achieved here. Like we have already you know, told them so much about education, told them so much about the practice and the philosophy behind it and the philosophy behind your own personhood. 
as well. Uh, but up next, we're going to dive even deeper into your past. And uh, we're going to discover the roots of where you founded this, you know, everything that is currently existing. We're going to dive into your university life and stay tuned. But right now, let's go back to On The Go. Oh wow, this is so cool. This is a main hall where the students will have um, wood competitions also, oh. and our school often held international conferences here. I wonder like, what this table over there is meant for? Uh, I think that is for some sort of conferences. Okay. Yeah. However, okay. when we hold a mood competition, we also set up like similar like this, uh, where there will be that will be the place for the tribunal to sit, mm -hmm. and then the lawyer uh, representing two parties will sit in the book. Oh, two so sides. like just like in real life, just like yeah. in the movies. Yeah. So you have the um, defendant and the plaintiff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the plaintiff, the plaintiff and the defendant. Yeah. And also the judge is here. Yes. <laughs> this is also also very fascinating for me. Yes. I always like um, law movies and I find that the lawyers and the people there look so cool, look so knowledgeable and very, very powerful. Yeah, I also agree with that. And I bet you will become a very powerful and intelligent prosecutor as well in the future. I, I, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you also mentioned that in your third year you had an internship, right? Yes. Uh, can you share with us about your internship? Yeah, so in my third year, I had two internships actually. The first one is at the, at the law firm. That is where I assist the real lawyer and maybe translating and some drafting, some memorial for the clients. Uh, my second internship is actually at the People's Security. That is what I want to, to go in the future, to work as a prosecutor. Oh, I see. So you have hands-on experience from the extracurricular activities. You also have the internship, and I bet that all those experiences are going to help you a lot when you become a prosecutor, right? Yes. Yeah, that sounds very fascinating, huh? So I guess that this is what the student life of a law student is about, right? Yeah. So you have the activities, the lecture, and all the, those theory. But how about the fun part? Like, do you have um, a special place for food that is nearby or something? Like, or is a part of the culture or the tradition and the identity of the law student here? So just over here, we have Mei Open, Gilan, and many students go there. Oh, that sounds so nice. Can you take me there? Because I'm so hungry right now. Yeah, sometimes. So, so much flattery. Okay. Yes. Stay tuned for the Mei Open. Okay. Yes, go. Now let's go. I think I've never tried uh, this dish before. Yeah. How did you know this place? Uh, my friends introduced me to this place, and this is a go-to spot of the law students. Yeah, I can sense it. So like we can have the dry eating and also like the water, the soup eating. Yeah. I just follow you, so I order the dry eating as well. <laughs> is it true that the clam noodle is a specialty from Hue? Yeah, it's originated yeah. in, in Hue, but here it's we have a southern version of it. So more like tom yum sauce or chili sauce. Yeah, like it's more, it's uh, yeah, it's different, right? Yes. We have lots of flavor. Do you want to try it? Yeah, of course. Being a law student, it's not just about the academics, not just about the um, juridical practice or all the academic side, but it's also about all the vibes here, like being uh, hanging out with friends and learning about your surroundings, and you know, just enjoying a very very tasty food here. So that is what a student of law is about, right? Yeah. So thank you, Min, for joining with us today. And it's a pleasure for us to have you here and to talk about the life of a law student. And that will be the end of our, final, of our episode today. And we hope that you stay tuned for our upcoming episodes about other universities as well. Stay tuned. Thank you. Welcome back from your journey on the go. And uh, I'm still here right here with Kivan Possible, continuing to talk about her wonderful, wonderful journey. Aww. So uh, 
when you were here on the show previously on the season, you discussed with us how you achieved the Fulbright student program and you got to uh, journey onto your master's degree in New York. But I believe that was your master's degree and you had a completely different uh, undergraduate studies. So can you tell us a little bit about both of those situations? Mm. Um, I was a, a made in Vietnam student. Mm, made in <laughs> um, Vietnam. Uh, my bachelor's degree was um, in uh, international relations in uh, the University of Social Sciences and Humanities uh -huh. <laughs> of Ho Chi Minh Nhân City, Trường Nhân Văn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a wonderful time uh, mm. for me. Um, uh, I was lucky to be in a faculty where um, the, the teachers encourage and embrace uh, creativity mm. and um, uh, you know they are they let us do a lot of crazy ideas that we have mm -hmm. for for shows for um, um, for example we welcome a lot of students abroad uh, mm. to Vietnam mm -hmm. and we create many shows to welcome them to introduce about Vietnamese culture. Ah. Um, or we create shows for International Women's Day or for Teacher's Day. And every show we have a different themes, uh, different ways of making people laugh and enjoy about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was lucky to be in a faculty where um, it was very, uh, it was a culture of uh, very encouraging mm -hmm. um, differences. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds like a very interesting time at uh, Nhân Văn University. Yeah. Uh, departing from that, I believe after finishing your undergraduate studies, you worked for six years in media and marketing and afterwards you took on a master's degree in media. Can you tell me a little bit about that gradual shift away from international relation mm. uh, into media? Yeah, um, when I was in um, my undergrad study, I also think about the war as black and white. Mm. As um, if you study something, you need to do something in that uh, field, um, or it's super hard to move uh, between sectors mm -hmm. or disciplines. The more I, I go out and I realize that um, we also have something called um, fate. Mm. <laughs> so, Serendipity. Yeah, so sometimes mm -hmm. uh, you graduate and you know somebody who works for a company who, who is in need of, of, of someone mm -hmm. and then that person knows you and then you got a job in that company. Mm. Or sometimes when you work at a certain company, you discover a new um, passion mm -hmm. and you follow it and then it creates, a, it opens a new road. Mm -hmm. So in my case, when I graduate from international relations, I know that I'm not gonna work in, um, in um, how do you call it, international relation field because mm -hmm. I wanna do something more creative. Mm -hmm. um, so one message is that, uh, Taking a major in bachelor degree is not like you have to marry it for the rest of your life. <laughs> you're gonna learn and you're gonna absorb mm -hmm. uh, all the knowledge and all the spirit that you get, but then you can apply to so many other jobs and fields. Mm -hmm. um, so I was recruited by um, the managing director of um, a fashion magazine oh. when it first came to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so I work as a, um, as a marketing executive Mm -hmm. over there and then after that I move on to work for a, a music corporation and uh, academy. Oh that's so interesting. As a very a, very diverse working it, I experience. think it's, it's a lot of time about fate and luck. Mm. I, I know people who who got who know the opportunities. Um, also when I was in school I volunteered for a lot of environment and um, helping um, less privileged people and so um, older people who work in those projects see uh, this young girl who's very enthusiastic in doing this work and they invite me to the professional world um, later when they mm -hmm. see a vacancy. So it's, it's a lot about fate, it's a lot about how you, um, how you do what you are given, how you do your job, because mm -hmm. everybody sees something, I always believe that. Um, whatever, however you do something is going to be seen by everyone and the next opportunities maybe will be given to you because of how you do your very current job. Mm. So just do your best. Um, I always feel like I have fire inside. I want to do everything um, with all of my passion. Mm. I believe in attraction because when you are what you believe in, it, it becomes itself. It, it comes true, right? So when you shifted from um, international relation to media, like I think there was a very long process of self-actualization 
and a long process of you know re rediscovering uh, your roots in creativity before you can step foot into media. So let's talk a bit about your media studies. We talked quite, we covered quite a bit of that in the previous episode, but I also want to ask, what was the major challenge in studying media abroad? Because I think media is one area that students study abroad a lot, but I wonder if there is a, anything that needs to be uh, debunked, any myths that need to be addressed. Mm. I think many people misunderstanding between media and communications. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we use the same word truyền thông, mm. and and when you say um, I I tôi học truyền thông, um, a lot of people think that you do communications mm -hmm. instead of media. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't do communications, but I have a friend who do communication, and um, also the study program of. Uh, communication or media varies from school to school. That's true. That's why when you choose the school, you need to learn about the curriculum mm -hmm. and learn about the focus of that school. If that school focus more on research or more, more on practice. Mm -hmm. um, so in my case, we study media um, in a sense, we, we, I took classes like uh, documentary studies, um, I took classes on uh, video production, audio production, media theories, um, some very theory oriented, but some very hands on. Mm -hmm. um, I learned about oral history, how oh. you interview people who know about an event and store it so that 20 years from now, 40 years from now, people can have knowledge about that event. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's about content producing, storing, and sharing with other people at the end of the day. That's mm -hmm. what media is about. That, that's a very interesting take on media because usually when we hear the word media, media nowadays, we immediately allocate it with digital media and it's usually something that is very visible and very um, understandable, if I may say. But sometimes it's about the stories and it's about the narrative too. Okay, so if you could tell us one piece of advice for students venturing into media and are looking to study abroad, what would it be? Uh, study the curriculum and the direction of the school that you want to go very carefully. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, media can mean different things in different school and in different programs. So learn about it very carefully and make sure that's what you really want to study. Like I said, you guys, throughout this entire episode, there are a million ways I can expand this talk <laughs> because you are just so resourceful and just so creative and you are such a good storyteller oh, and you know how pleasure. to, you know, captivate us <laughs> with your sincerity. Thank you. I have a good host right here. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but now I believe we have a little challenge for you or it's going to be for me, I don't know, because... <laughs> for uh, both of us. <laughs> for the both of us, right? The, the IFO family is very intense, so I never know what's coming up next, but coming up next is IFO Challenge. Stay tuned. Welcome back to IFO Challenge. And uh, as I expected, this is going to be the hardest challenge within the season for me, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And we're going to have an improv challenge right here within the space. We're going to have an improv, a very small, brief improv session with each other. Yeah. But can you give me a few pointers before we start? Because I have zero knowledge in improv. So we were just brief by the organizer of the show uh -huh. that um, they're gonna have a window and then in that window they're gonna show um, something. Mm. And so we gonna have to create an improv scene based on the window. Okay. So the window is gonna be um, a suggestion for us. You and I, we haven't or and we will not discuss anything. Mm -hmm. We're gonna jump right into the making of the scene. And um, guys, this is hard because this is gonna take like two months to learn and right now Tao Tam haven't prepared anything yet and um, I'm also I'm also very surprised about this <laughs> challenge so let's bring it on because that's live right that's life yeah, that's and improv. we gotta roll with the punches yeah. I am scared for uh, my life but here we are by the window and let's start the challenge IFO nightly shows 
Well, honey, it's been the third winter that we spent in New York together as a couple. I'm missing home. I'm not gonna lie. I really expected to, you know, be able to fly back to home. And it's so sad that, you know, the New York New Year has to be so dreary. Right. Um, I miss home too. I miss all the food that we can have um, in Siam Center mm. and all the shopping that we can do. I miss cheap shopping. But you know what I don't miss? What? Your mother hunkering down on us every moment. Oh, we're talking about her again? I mean, uh, what else are we gonna talk about? Because she obviously hates me. She doesn't hate you. She just doesn't like your sense of fashion. My sense of fashion is fine. She doesn't like that we're together. She doesn't want me to be with you. And that's why we're not home in Vietnam right now. No, she loves you. She just thinks that at midnight, when you walk around with your long hair and wearing white, it's not the most comforting things for her to see. So just don't, don't, don't think so. Next year, we're going to go back and we're gonna, I'm gonna buy you like pink and green and blue shirt so that you won't wear white in the house anymore. It's suddenly getting very cold in here. I know. I wonder why. Maybe the warming system doesn't work anymore. But do you hear that faint sound? I think there's a, there's a creak in the window. Hey, old friend. Hey, not today, it's New Year. Oh. We tell you to come at Halloween only. Yeah, we've talked about this, Fred. Spencer. Come on. Yeah, Spencer. What? We're busy. It's New Year. Oh, there's oh. Fred. I see Fred approaching Fred. right there. Oh my God. You guys, this is not the season. This is the season of joy, okay? Yeah. This is not supposed to be the season of death. You, you don't listen to us. Okay, you want to joy? Okay, let's sit together and look out the window. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they are. It's so sad that it has to rain all the time this season in New York, though. Yeah. And scene! <laughs>so this is what it feels like to be scared and yeah. entertained at the mm. same time. Because you have to multitask there. Mm -hmm. You have to focus on your partner. You mm -hmm. have to think about the next line while being present to what your partner say. And you mm -hmm. have to build a story. You have to act emotional, uh, self, uh, emotion expression, mm -hmm. body language. So you multitask uh, all at once. Ah. So there you have it, a very brief snippet into the world of improv. You can see how terrified I was, but also all the joy that we were having. And it was really such a fun conversation. Yes, yes it is. And also, so that is just a small scene of improv. Mm -hmm. Improv um, is very large. And I hope that you guys, after this episode, if you like to dig more into it, mm -hmm. is the whole world of improv. Mm -hmm. There's short form, long form, and we have improv activities in uh, southern areas in, in Da Nang, in Hanoi. So wow. just uh, Google the word improv and you will find your improv uh, club in your city. Um, I'm running Saigon Improv House, but I know that Ha Ha Hanoi and also Da Nang Improv Group. So just search it and then you're going to enjoy it so much. That's so exciting because I, I didn't know that we have a national network already in place. So you guys, there you have it. The world of improv through the eyes of Vung Possible <laughs> because, you know, she created it for the Vietnamese community. Anyways, thank you Vung so much for coming onto the show, inspiring me so much <laughs> and also giving our audience such a wonderful insight to you know the philosophy of improv and the way to be you yeah know, just be yourself and my be pleasure sincere. thank you so much for all that you've shared here today yeah thank you thank uh thank IELTS face off and thank everyone who in the production team for giving me this beautiful opportunity in this beautiful um uh, set mm -hmm. and uh, a very very fun program and a wonderful host oh, i couldn't ask you. for a better host to um join with me and and share about improv with other people and i hope that um we live our life and yes and and react authentically to whatever comes to us and hopefully we're gonna have the best outcome. <laughs> we will be having the best outcome, but for now, thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye. That's it, everyone. We're going to improv class. Let's like, go. Everybody, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going right now after this episode. <laughs>
This is a bit uh, off topic, but may I ask what the horoscope you are? <laughs> uh, Scorpio. Oh, <laughs> I, I see the Scorpio vibes. I do, I do. But... Okay, do we have a whole day? I'm gonna have we a We have a whole day, whatever you like. I am okay. here. <laughs> and scene. Oh my god. <laughs> and that was totally improvising. That was so strange. And thank you so much. Oh,